I am Violet Gonda and welcome to the virtual launch of the Ndabaningi Sitole Foundation. We celebrate the work of one of Zimbabwe's iconic liberation war heroes, Reverend Ndabaningi Sitole, on what would have been his 100th birthday today. The NSF has been established by the family of the Reverend and well wishes to honor and perpetuate his legacy as an advocate for civil rights and pan-African democracy. We will hear from a selection of key speakers, including family members, friends, and some trustees of the foundation. They are Reverend Kenneth Mutata, the Secretary General of Zimbabwe Council of Churches. He's also a cleric of the Evangelical Lutheran Church the chairperson of the NSF, retired Anglican Bishop Chad Gandia, executive manager of the foundation, Makaita Noel Mutasa, Dr. Ibo Mandaza, an academic and businessman who's also the director of a local think tank, SAPIS Trust, Sipikelelo Sitole, the eldest child of Reverend Ndabaning Sitole. We have a slight change in the program. Former Kenyan Prime Minister Raila Odinga will not be able to join us because of unforeseen circumstances, but has sent us his keynote address, which will now be read on his behalf by Simbai Muchimurenga Chizengeni, who is the grandson of Reverend Dabaning Sitolim. In the first hour of the program, we will see selections of video presentations first by Mr. Makaita No Mutasa. I will then come back and moderate a panel discussion with the guest speakers. To our viewers who would like to hear, we would like to hear your thoughts on this. You can get in touch by using the hashtag NSF virtual launch. That's a hashtag NSF virtual launch, or you can follow at Ndaba Foundation and on Alpha Media's Heart and Soul Facebook page. This event is being recorded on Zoom. We will also take some questions and comments from viewers during the interactive session. We will now start the proceedings with the video presentation. How united are the four main African uh, delegations to this conference now? Well, they are basically united. Namely, we want independence in Zimbabwe. There is no disagreement on that one. We accept the principle of a transitional government. We accept also the condition that this interim government must have a preponderance of the African representatives. We are also united in our demand that we shall have independence within uh, 12 months. Good evening, fellow Zimbabweans at home and abroad. Those in the diaspora world and our fellow African compatriots dispersed throughout the world by history. Good evening, distinguished guests, our regional, continental, and international audience, and all those tuned in from all parts of the universe. I hope and pray that I find you all safe from the COVID-19 pandemic that has so ravaged our world. My name is Makaita Nowo Mutasa. I am a trustee and the interim executive manager of the Ndabaningi Stole Foundation. Tonight, my heart is filled with joy to preside over this momentous occasion. This is a joy that I hope and truly believe I can share with all of you that are present. And it is a joy that resurrects the name of an iconic figure, Ndabaningi. Sitole. 
In this and the historic Momondas evening, we formally launched the Ndavaningi Stole Foundation in memory of this great pioneer and architect of the armed struggle that brought independence to Zimbabwe. To many, the name Dabaningi Stole is synonymous with the struggle for our freedom. To set off our evening, I would like to invite Reverend Dr. Kenneth Mutata, the Secretary General of the Zimbabwe Council of Churches, to lead us in devotion and invocation and to say a few words on the role of the clergy in the struggle for Zimbabwe. Reverend Dr. Kenneth Mutata. Uh, welcome uh, to all of you uh, to this uh, important day when we remember um, a hero, uh, Reverend and uh, Abaneng Stone. I ask all of you to stand as we pray. Gracious God, we want to thank you because you established men and women to provide the leadership required to take your people from bondage to freedom. We thank you for the leadership of Reverend Thompson Samkang, the leadership of uh, Bishop Lamont, the leadership of Bishop Kenneth Skelton, the leadership of Bishop Abel Zorewa, the leadership of Reverend Kenan Banana, and indeed the leadership of Reverend Nabaneng Stone. This clergy and many other Christians moved by the gospel listened to your call for them to assume public office for the sake for the sake of the freedom of your people. And today we celebrate one of them. We pray that as we celebrate this icon, you may also awaken men and women of God who desire to see your people enjoy this gift of freedom and total liberation that comes through the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. In his name we pray. Amen. The role of the church in the public space, particularly the role of clergy in political processes, has always been viewed as controversial. Today, we remember one such clergy and the leader who contributed to the democratization process of Zimbabwe, Reverend Nabaneng Stone. Reverend Nabaneng Stone is not the only uh, champion of democracy uh, in Zimbabwe. There were many other clergy who came before him and those who came after him, who made a huge contribution in the way Zimbabwe's democracy has been shaped. If we remember even earlier, before Nabaneng Stone, people would remember uh, Reverend Thompson uh, Samkani, who played a very important role very early in the imagination of participation of Africans in politics, when he contributed uh, to the formation of the African National Council. He also contributed to the formation uh, of the Bantu National Congress and he was the minister of the Methodist Church. I believe that he could have influenced uh, Reverend Davaneng Stolle, who also went uh, to, uh, to the Methodist uh, School. Reverend Davaneng Stolle himself played a very important role, both as a lay preacher, nourishing the spiritual uh, well-being of, uh, of God's people, uh, but also helping them to see that it was possible for them to engage in the public affairs of the nation. Indeed, he contributed to the formation of SAPU, uh, and then, of course, was the uh, first year president of SAM. And he participated even in the transition uh, uh, from Rhodesia uh, to Rhodesia, Zimbabwe, and uh, of course, uh, played uh, as an opposition 
member in the independent as you are. The way of the clergy, it is, it is important for us when we remember the clergy in Zimbabwe to remember someone like Bishop uh, Kennedy Skelton, an Anglican Bishop uh, in the western part uh, of Zimbabwe. He played a very, very important role in awakening the conscience of white Christians on the plight uh, of the oppression of black people. We know that uh, his desire was to work across churches and hence his influence uh, in the formation uh, of, uh, uh, of Bulawayo Christian Council. His role in establishment of ecumenism in Zimbabwe was very, very important. It was such ecumenical thinking that shaped how churches contributed to the democratization uh, of Zimbabwe. We cannot think about this clergy uh, we, without remembering uh, Bishop Donald Lamont, a Catholic uh, uh, a bishop, who was a, a, a fierce critic uh, of racism. Uh, he wrote uh, an open letter, uh, for those who remember, uh, to E.H. Smith, uh, uh, soon after the, uh, the unilateral uh, declaration of, uh, of independence uh, in 1965. And especially his criticism was in the Land Tenure Act, when he pointed out that such a position that segregated uh, black people in access to land was contrary to the heart uh, of the New Testament, which shaped the Christianity which E. H. Smith prided himself of being part. Of course, uh, many people would, may not remember all these people, but they will obviously remember uh, Bishop uh, Abel Sorewa, who was uh, a very important player, especially in the transitional period uh, in Zimbabwe. And, and he played an important role, especially when many of the nationalists were either in exile or when they were uh, uh, in, in prison. He played an important role, of course, and he signed uh, uh, the, the Lancaster House Agreement on behalf uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Zimbabwe politicians. Uh, our first president in the independent Zimbabwe was Reverend Kenan Banana. He also played an important role, especially many people will remember the role he played uh, 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 when we signed with to, to, to come together as Zimbabweans uh, after a bloody uh, massacre of people in Midlands and Matabelland, and we signed the unit accord uh, between Joshua Nkomo and, uh, and Robert Mugabe, uh, or between ZANU, uh, 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 PF, and PF ZANU. Now, if you look at all these uh, uh, clergy, they are wrong. They, they said, there are threads that you can see that define how their work contributed to democratization of Zimbabwe. I identified five things. The first thing is that they sowed the seeds of democracy, especially in the formation of political parties and taking leadership in political parties. It was at a time when uh, this was uh, not easy to identify with, especially if you were a Christian. But they provided the first initial thought that this was possible. The second thing that we can observe is that they provided community or thought or opinion leadership to help people to realize that oppression, racial segregation was wrong and that liberation was possible. So they provided initial critical consciousness among Christians. The third thing is that they provided transitional leadership. It was not very easy to imagine that we could move from oppression to freedom without too much bloodshed. But they showed that it was possible to stand in that gap between oppression and liberation. Fourth, we can see that they played a very important role in fostering a national unity. Uh, uh, of course, uh, we can see that uh, Reverend Kenneth Banana stand out as an example. But all of this clergy, we can see that they, they, their desire was to see a nation that is just, uh, that is unified, that is peaceful, but that is prosperous for everyone else. Last but not least, we can see that uh, the clergy also showed that it was normal for Christians to engage in the public space, whether it is in science, whether it is in research, whether it is in economics, or even in politics, they showed that it was normal for Christians to get involved in the public space with a conscience. 
One thing we can learn from this uh, very controversial clergy is that if we are going to remember them the way we must, we must recognize that it is possible for Christians, but particularly for clergy, to take a leading role in the public space, especially to do it with a clear conscience and commitment to the gospel of justice and righteousness. Thank you. so much very very so much reverend matanta for your prayers and so for your insightful words into the role of the clergy during the struggle for our liberation it is so befitting from your words considering that reverend davening stole whose memory we are celebrating tonight was himself a reverend in the church it is also of significant interest that Reverend Stolle, in going into frontline nationalist politics, declared that he had come to the realization that he could not continue to minister religion to have slaves, and that he needed to work for the total liberation of the country for all Zimbabweans, but without dissociating himself from the church thank you reverend mutata for that i would now just like to take a few moments to explain the general structure of our evening i will shortly call on our chairman of the board of trustees of the foundation retired anglican bishop chad nicholas gandia to give us a welcome address and to acknowledge the guest speaker we have tonight and i will also in due course ask Dr. Ibo Mandaza to do the formal introduction of the guest speaker. We are broadcasting both on Zoom and WhatsApp, and I would like to encourage our audience to send in their comments and their queries in comments on our chat feeds. But at the end of this session or this evening, which we hope will last under two hours, we will have an interactive session with all our audience in which we will take a discussive forum. Thank you very much. Over to you, Bishop Gandia. Please, if you could give us your welcome address. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, and our guest of honor, Your Excellency Raila Odinga. I'm delighted to welcome you all, our distinguished guests from all over the world, to this momentous occasion where we are launching the Dambaningi Stole Foundation in Zimbabwe under the theme Zimbabwe's Shared Legacy, a foundation of peace with justice for reconciliation and unity. The first of July 2020 is special and unique because it is the centennial birthday of the late Reverend Ndabaningi Stole, whose life and legacy have united us all here today. This launch takes place during an unprecedented time when the world is battling the COVID-19 pandemic, making it impossible for all of us to convene here in Harare, as was originally intended. Technology has allowed us to be together in spite of our varied geographic locations, enabling you who would otherwise not have made it to Zimbabwe today to join us from wherever in the world you may be. I am especially honored to welcome our keynote speaker, former Prime Minister of Kenya, His Excellency Raila Odinga, EGH, whose father was a prominent figure 
in Kenya's struggle for independence, who himself was well acquainted with Reverend Damaningi Stole, often spending time with him during his visits to Zimbabwe. His Excellency Raila Odinga's efforts towards reconciliation and unity in Kenya are an inspiration to us here in Zimbabwe and are in sync with the theme of our launch. This theme demonstrates the foundation's purpose of promoting discourse on Zimbabwe's liberation history, promoting reconciliation, unity, and national healing, as well as social and economic development and prosperity in Zimbabwe and Africa at large. The foundation itself was established by the family of the Reverend Ndabaningistole and well wishers in conjunction with patriotic Zimbabweans to honor and perpetuate his legacy as an advocate for civil rights, pan-African democracy, as well as social and economic development in both pre- and post-independent Zimbabwe and Africa at large. Ngabaningi Stole was a dynamic individual whose life is a challenge to summarize. Three years ago, he was born in Nyamankovu, Zimbabwe, as the first of the nine children of Jim Chandwana Stole and Siapi Chuma. Stole developed a keen interest in learning at an early age, and this would contribute to his academic and intellectual progression, setting the stage for this remarkable life. At the age of 15, he received a scholarship to attend the Dyer Mission run by Garfield Todd, who would later become Liberal Prime Minister of Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe, from 1953 to 1958. He would then continue his education through teacher training at Wadlove Mission School in the 1940s and subsequently at Gwane Mission and then Gezi Mission where he also obtained a correspondence. In 1953, Ndaba Stole moved to Mount Selenda Mission, where he continued to teach, was a lay preacher. The mission recommended him for theological training at Newton Theological Seminary in Andover, Massachusetts in the United States of America. He returned from the USA in 1957 as an ordained minister, becoming headmaster of Chikore Mission in Chipinge, and was elected president of the Rhodesian African Teachers Association in 1959 which marked his entry into politics. The same year, his most popular book, African Nationalism, was published. He would go on to be imprisoned for 11 years from 1964 to 1975 for his role as a nationalist leader. And upon his release, he continued to be a major figure in the years building up to the independence of Zimbabwe in 1980. After, he continued his lifelong fight for democracy, justice, and human rights as an opposition figure in independent Zimbabwe right until his death in December of 2000 in Pennsylvania, 
in the USA where he had gone for medical treatment. Prolific author, he published books in his lifetime and left men unpublished writings that the foundation intends to publish, republish posthumously. To celebrate our launch, we are excited to launch the third edition of this book, African Nationalism, which served as an inspiration for many of his fellow African nationalists. Baningi Stole was a family man who endeavored to play his role as a father to six children and as a husband to his first wife, Kenan Alice Stole, and later Vesta Stole. All this in spite of the sacrifices he had to make, including separation from his family during his years of detention. Ingistole was a family man. Sorry. Our journey as the foundation began as discussions and suggestions during the days after his burial in December of 2000. Though a number of efforts were made and the family received several inquiries about it over the years. The idea really started gaining momentum in 2015 when family members went through his library and found a wealth of information, including his letters, unpublished writings, photographs, and many vestiges of Zimbabwe's history. Found that there were many missing pages to the history of our liberation struggle that were in the library. As is the case in Zimbabwe at large, they also discovered professors in the United Kingdom and the USA who were using Stoller's books as part of their Pan-African History and African Liberation Studies curricula. At this point, it was now imperative that something be established to preserve this shared legacy. Thus, Stoller's eldest daughter, Pique, registered the foundation in the United States in 2017 connect these universities, institutions, and other like-minded individuals with the intention of subsequently establishing the foundation in Zimbabwe. Ever since, the foundation has sought out individuals and institutions that share in the vision to provide the same missing pages in Zimbabwe's history. Because Ndabaningi Stole was such a unifying figure, his family has always believed that his legacy ought to be, sh to be a shared one. Sitole himself believed that no one individual was responsible for the country's liberation. But rather, it was a shared struggle whose success was a result of cumulative efforts by all Zimbabweans and those that supported African liberation movements in all respects. As chair, I would like to express my gratitude to our diverse group of serving trustees for their contribution in furthering the establishment and mandate of the foundation. Senator Sekai Holland, Makaita Noel Mutasa, Esther Chikumira, 
Messi ma fungai majome pike stole simbai muchirenga chizengeni and eric hammonds the foundation has established the way to share baningi stole's legacy with zimbabweans africans and the world at large hope that the foundation leads the way for other families, individuals, and institutions to share their own stories and articulate their experiences such that collectively we can contribute to filling the missing pages of our shared history in a way that builds foundations of peace with justice, reconciliation, and unity. Historians say the way a people articulate and understand their history influences how those people negotiate their present and shape their future. Let the foundation be a light that shines so bright it encourages other lights to shine. Thank you. In talking about the work of the foundation tonight, I would like to go through its core objectives, its aspirations and goals, and I would also like to share with you its immediate and longer term initiatives and activities. The Japanese History Foundation has been established by family, by friends, and by well wishes of the Reverend to celebrate and to honor his legacy as an advocate for civil rights, as a peace activist, as a liberation stalwart, as an icon for our independent struggle, right? And that name, Dabaningi Stole, is too large to be ignored or to be forgotten in the context of our history. The foundation's broad and core dynamics in terms of objectives is to work towards the following issues. Number one, to promote transparent discourse on Zimbabwe's liberation, both Chimurenga 1 and Chimurenga 2. Dear 
audience tonight, there is insufficient ongoing public discourse on Chimurenga 1. Equally, there is a growing conception that they are revisionist accounts in Chimurenga 2. The foundation will promote research and collaboration of oral and written accounts of both Chimurenga 1 and 2, in particular the contested episodes and contested facts, the uncelebrated heroes and heroines, and the role of the masses in our struggles for liberation. Historians and researchers alike will be called to duty by the foundation to an ace to verify and to document both struggles in ways that once and for all will provide an unambiguous, undistorted, fair and accurate narrative. Number two, we would like to promote reconciliation, peace with justice, unity and national healing. Again, to all our audience, peace, reconciliation and national healing and unity have continued to evade and elude our people 40 years after the attainment of independence, despite several lukewarm attempts to achieve it. It must not escape the observant eye that like Rwanda, 26 years after a diabolic genocide, has made unimaginable world-class strides towards human and economic development on the platform of transitional justice through the Gakaka traditional court systems that they used. And those that were designed to promote communal healing and rebuilding of trust, and which brought perpetrators and their victims face to face in an effort to actually dispense with reconciliation. The foundation will actively seek to promote transparent, open dialogue that brings closure to the human tragedies of our past both pre- and post-independence, and to include the Zimbabwean black-on-black -black bitter episodes of our generations. The third core objective of the foundation will be to promote social, human, and economic development in Zimbabwe and beyond. Sadly, our country, once the jewel crown, once Africa's dream, is in a sorry state of its former glory. Having destroyed a functional economy inherited at independence, our nation now lags far behind regional and continental peers for reasons that reduct to lack of pragmatic governance. The foundation aims to promote the tenets of good leadership and governance as a contribution to the restoration of war. And of piloting alongside others a human and economic developmental trajectory that should and will change the fortunes of our present and future generations. To achieve its objectives, the foundation has embarked on some initiatives, some of which I am able to presently elaborate on. Firstly, I would like to talk about the Ndabaningi Stole African Research Center. This the Baningi Stole African Research Center will be a scholarly center, a scholarly research library, which shall house in particular Reverend Stoles and other luminaries for that matter, published and unpublished works, artifacts, printed media, right, and any historical material that we can collect and deposit there to. It shall be a repository of all those accounts from other uncelebrated liberation heroes and heroines. Its goal is to be a library where critical pieces of the missing pages of our Zimbabwean history can be located. And it shall be developed and built upon not only through the efforts of the foundation, but through the efforts of our peoples at large. It will be a resource for academics and non-academics who wish to know more about the Reverend Stole and who wish to know more about Chimurenga 1 and Chimurenga 
to, as well as Pan-African history, as far as we can put it together. Significant progress has been made on establishing the Ndabaningi Stolle Research Center. In support of this initiative, we appeal to anyone who has any material on Reverend Ndabaningi Stolle, be it papers, be it articles, be it videos, recordings, or anything at all that you may have in your possession to contact us at the foundation and to able to share that material with us so that it can eventually make its way into the research center. I would like to make that same appeal to local and international organizations that are in possession of historic uh, material that can actually help us to continue to build this. The family of Reverend Stolle has so kindly agreed to give up the litany of library materials that they have on Reverend Stolle, the his handwritten notes, the vast depth of letters that were exchanged between him and a lot of other people, right, and published works that have been discovered, and anything that they have in their possession for their late father, grandfather, and family uh, patriarch to be given and to be used in the African Research Center, Dabadingi Stolle African Research Center. So we thank them for that. Secondly, I would also like to talk about the Dabaningi Stolle Scholarship. The foundation has already reached a signed agreement with the University of Reading in the United Kingdom to establish a Dabaningi Stolle Scholarship for African students who wish to pursue studies at the master's and PhD levels in African history. This scholarship will be open to Africans throughout the continent, provided they are pursuing their studies in African history and the struggles of independence throughout the continent. In that regard, we are so grateful to Associate Professor Dr. H. Schmidt, who teaches African history at the University of Reading for facilitating this collaboration. Dr. Schmidt herself is a historian of modern Africa whose passion for Africa right, has led her to specialize in the history of East Africa and Southern Africa, including countries like Tanzania and our own great Zimbabwe in the 19th and 20th centuries. She's also one of those professors that the foundation identified as having been using the written works of Reverend Dabaningi Stolle in their curricula. Thirdly, I would like to talk about the program for the republication of the 12 books that Reverend Stolle published in his lifetime. As part of the celebration of this launch, we are releasing the third edition, right, of his signature book, African Nationalism, as already has been said by our esteemed chairperson. And towards the end of this year, by December, we will republish another of his books, right, Letters from Africa, Letters from Salisbury Prison, a remarkable collection of his letters that he wrote when he was in prison, and which provide significant gaps, explanatory gaps, into the occurrences and happenings throughout our liberation struggle. I look so, for, so much forward to the republication of that book and to its being available to people in Zimbabwe so that they can read for themselves, write what transpired in that period. I would like to make a special mention of another book, the very first book that Reverend Dabaningi Stolle ever wrote, and the very first book ever to be written in Debele, Umvukela Waman Debele, which means the Debele Rebellion, and which was published in 1956. This book is an emotive account meant to raise the consciousness of oppressed and it did exactly that, not only in Reverend Stoll himself, but in a whole number of other nationalists who obviously then contributed to the liberation of our country. This book will be republished in 2021. Also of significance to the people of Zimbabwe and which they should find interesting are Reverend Stoll's post-independence ideas and beliefs which he penned in two booklets, right? The New Social Order for Zimbabwe, 
and the new political order for Zimbabwe. The foundation will prioritize the principles enunciated in those booklets in the annual Dabaningis Dole commemoration lectures that will commence at the end of this year and which will be in partnership with think tanks, with the civil society, with academia, and with tertiary education institutions. To support these objectives and initiatives, the foundation is appealing for donations and is seeking sponsorship for its programs. The finances of the foundation will be audited by a firm of public accountants and auditors who have already been appointed and who have accepted their role and it is our sincere hope that individuals, institutions alike, those that are with us in our audience tonight and those that will follow our work through our website and social media handles will extend their lending help to the work of our foundation. This has already been clearly explained by our chairman, Bishop Gandia, at a pre-launch press conference. The foundation does not seek political space in the affairs of Zimbabwe. The foundation does not support any particular political party or any particular individual in their individual political sense. The foundation, however, retains its civil and social rights, like any other law-abiding civil Zimbabwean, to discuss and to comment on the affairs of our country in a constructive, developmental, and cohesive manner. And um, indeed, our foundation will stick to that principle. With the spirit of a shared legacy, the foundation will be reaching out to other families that are of the liberation struggle and also to other institutions and also to other peoples across Africa to collaborate our work and to collaborate our objectives. As a foundation, we are dedicated to celebrating the extraordinary life of Reverend Ndabaningis Tole and for feathering his shared legacy to build foundations of peace with justice, for reconciliation, and for unity in our country. I thank you, our audience, for the opportunity to explain the work of our foundation further and the work that lies ahead of us as a foundation. I now ask Dr. Ibo Mandaza, who himself needs very little introduction, to make a few remarks on Dabaningi's Tole as a person and to introduce our guest speaker for the evening. Thank you very much. Well, I'm most pleased to be associated with the conception and establishment of the Nabaniki Story Foundation. I think this is a very noble idea, a bit belated, I think, even though the old man you know, will be almost 100 and it's more than 20 years since he died. Uh, all the same, I think it's, it's a very momentous occasion uh, to mark the history and the contribution of one of the founding fathers of modern Zimbabwe. The story is one we remember even as students. And I was pleased, I was glad and privileged to have worked with him in this very office uh, in the early 90s when he was writing his autobiography, which regrettably he didn't finish. Uh, but we remember so many aspects of it. And of course, his own writings are a testimony to this great man. My duty this evening is to introduce Raila Odinga, a great nationalist in the tradition of Nabonik Stoll himself, a Kenyan, but a nationalist. There can be no history complete without mention of Raila Odinga and his enormous uh, work and struggle in modern day Kenya. A man who, whom the presidency has eluded several times, mainly because of the 
vehicle is of politics in our, on our continent, and in particular, the institution of is, uh, election rigging and election irregularities. Raila Odinga has been associated with Zimbabwe in many ways. I've met him here in Zimbabwe on a number of occasions. And he's also a very close uh, uh, friend. I also call him a, a, a brother-in-law because my brother, Edgar Tekere, who you can see there, uh, was married to Bedro Odinga um, some years ago. So our families became very entwined. And when Bedro is in a Zarare, she will always call me. And indeed, when Raila is around, Raila is also a co close colleague and brother of one of my very, very closest um, as, uh, contemporaries, Peter Anyang Nyongo, um, whose books are his books are among on this shelf. And Peter Anyang Nyongo is a, a professor of political science and currently governor of Kisumu. But today we're talking about Raila Odinga. I thank you. Few things can be as rewarding as taking up the cause of a colonized, suffering people and ending up with helping them attain the desired and deserved freedom. And yet even fewer things can be more demanding, painful, and risky. Fighting for freedom is, is literally walking through the biblical valley of the shadow of death. These are the realities liberation fighters in Africa and everywhere across the world had to contend with. Each day, balancing their hope that when freedom came, it would confer dignity on long-suffering people, and the fact that it was going to be a long, painful, and even deadly endeavor that could end with the fighters never living to see the fruits of their endeavors. The struggle to free Africa from the yoke of colonialism was long and treacherous. It claimed thousands of lives and required countless sacrifices. Many of those sacrifices went unnoticed, while some of them found their way into history books and are even remembered today with great pride and honor. As new generations join our nations, while witnesses to the struggles give way, it is upon us to do everything to ensure that memories of what it took for freedom to come are constantly renewed as a guide both to our past and our future. That is why the effort to preserve the memories of Reverend Dabaningi Sitole through this project is significant. This is not and cannot be about Reverend Sitole. It is part of the struggle for Zimbabwe and indeed all formerly colonized territories to preserve freedom by making people know its prize. It is always important to recognize that our nations are free today because at some stage there were men and women, boys and girls who stayed brave through all the bloodshed and the indignity of prison and detention so that we could be free. 
But even more importantly, we must always ask the uneasy question, what were they fighting for and what became of it? If we know where we came from and where we were going, we can easily tell whether and where we lost their way. Otherwise, we get condemned to meandering and wandering on the path to nowhere. We are reminded of the words of liberal Rhodesian colonial Prime Minister Garfield Todd, who admitted that Reverend Sitole struggled against odds which would have dismayed most men. We know that Reverend Sitole was one of the earlier leaders to push the idea of Pan-Africanism, which had been championed by earlier generations of diaspora Africans, such as Edward Blyden, George Padmore, Marcus Garvey, and W.E.B. Du Bois from the West Indies and America. It is, however, a fact that the committed political leadership with long-term visions that were typical of Reverend Sitole and our founding fathers like Namdi Azikiwe, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, Julius Nyerere, Seku Tore, Jomo Kenyatta, Oginga Odinga, Abdel Nasser, and more recently, Nelson Mandela has either been lost or is rapidly fading. So, we must be bold enough and ask the question of what happened to the Africa that the founders were so passionate about. In the many books written, particularly in African nationalism, we will find guides to the original dream and hopefully a path out of the stagnation and disappointments that followed. I'm most honored to have written the foreword to the third edition of the book, which is being published as part of the launch celebration. It is also with pride that I now see it as symbolic that Ndabanigi Stole launched African nationalism in Nairobi, Kenya at a book fair in 1960. As a fellow Pan-Africanist who shares in Sitola's Afro-optimism, I believe that the work of previous generations has yet to be completed. I believe that it is upon us to bridge the divide between the old and new. Africa is the world's youngest continent with the potential to become a powerhouse in the future. Africa's rise can be fueled by our common understanding and upholding of our heritage and history, which we need to author and preserve. As a continent, we must also do more to rein in the cancers that have bled us dry this far. The cancers of corruption, tribalism, nepotism, patronage, and the exercise of politics as a zero-sum game in which the winner takes all and the loser loses everything. The politics that pits region against region, tribe against tribe, race against race, faith against faith, and generation against generation is a sure path to the precipice and goes against everything our fathers, our founders envisaged. I therefore appreciate the theme of this launch. Zimbabwe's shared legacy, a foundation of peace with justice for reconciliation and unity. This theme reflects our current struggles in Kenya and is something that is very dear to us in Kenya. For we know a people united can never be defeated. I am privileged to have met and interacted with Dabaningi Stole in person as I did many others of Zimbabwe's first fathers. I can speak with personal conviction that he was a man who meant well for his country and our shared continent of Africa. Let us build on his legacy and create a foundation of peace with justice for reconciliation and unity. No one else is coming to the rescue. We are our own liberators. Thank you. Read on behalf of His Excellency Raila Odinga, EGH. What was it like having 10 years inside? Well, it was like hell itself, you can be sure of that one. <coughs> what kept you going? Well, uh, the inner person can get me going. What do you mean by the inner person? Your, your religious faith? Uh, uh, yeah, my religious faith. <laughs> and my conviction that uh, my cause uh, is right. Has it been worth it? Well, I did mostly reading and writing. Okay. <laughs> I read mostly uh, sociology and also politics. Okay. You've written one book already, and you're another one ready now? Yes. Has it all been worth it? Uh, what worth it? The uh, 10 years of your life inside? 
Yeah. Yes, it has been worth it uh, because if uh, people are to demonstrate their belief in their own cause, they have to suffer for it. And I'm glad I, I suffered for the cause uh, of the people of this country. After all, it is our natural right that we should have uh, independence in this country. It is inconceivable to any logical mind that uh, the effect the vote should be in the hands of 5% of the population uh, to the exclusion of 95% of the population. After all the speed and all the events of the past two or three weeks, does it make you feel hopeful that you can now reach an accommodation with the Rhodesian government? No, we cannot reach an accommodation with the Rhodesian government because the Rhodesian government is determined on minority rule. Until they change that position, I cannot see how we can reach an accommodation. You don't think that position is going to change at a constitutional conference? I don't know. Uh, that is the question you should ask Mr. A.L. Smith. <laughs> I would now like to ask the eldest daughter of Reverend Dabaningi Stole, Mama Spikelelo Stole, to please give us a vote of thanks and to please give us in your own words the family's appreciation the appreciation of the friends and the appreciation of all that you are associated with in the work that the foundation has now embarked on mama pique please give us your words thank you very much good day to you all on behalf of the Sitole family, it gives me great pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks to you all for joining us in launching the Dabaningi Stole Foundation. For those who are familiar with Reverend Dabaningi Stole's words, this is an overdue project for which I am extremely grateful to the trustees for undertaking. Considering that our nation is by and large now devoid of truth and subject to a single narrative, I am particularly touched by their boldness as expressed in the objectives and the purpose of the foundation. It is truly encouraging that the trustees have actively taken the best steps towards correcting this deficit. Going forward, the challenge to all of us is to engage in a more genuine discourse that will be necessary to build sustainable foundations of peace with justice for reconciliation and unity. For this occasion, we could not have had a more befitting guest speaker than His Excellency Raeli Odinga, who himself is all too familiar with the pre and post independence challenges. His legacy is one that guards the values people have died fighting for and one that empowers the youth to create a more just society. Indeed, he has fought hard for his views and always stuck to principle rather than expediency. A true reflection of my father's beliefs. Baba, we thank you for sharing your insights and inspiring us with your words of wisdom. We want to express our sincere thanks to Reverend Kenneth Mutata, retired Bishop Chad Nicholas Gandia, Mr. Noel Makaita Mutasa and Dr. Ibo Mandaza for their individual roles in bringing today's event to life. Additionally, the launch of this foundation would not have been possible without the financial contribution from a number of well-wishers, including Naani Chando, Janiya Mkunga, Jocelyn Hassan, Shingai Stole, Blessing Dube, and Aleta Mzorewa. Thank you to the organizers and technical team who worked tirelessly to make this event possible. These are Patience Musane Namo Nusengo, Musi Kanyile, Daniel Sango, Priscilla Stole Nube, Johanne Mbofu, Melo Dijigwaza, and Panganai Stole. And last but not least, a big thank to you the audience for giving us the gift of your time in order to participate and celebrate this occasion. In the spirit of becoming our own liberators, the challenge I leave with you today is to take courage and be leaders of transformative change. Thank you. Uh, we feel very strongly that the whole idea is uh, to buy time 
for the Smith regime and also to defuse the present armed struggle going on. This is the old trick of Mr. Smith. In 1974, Mr. Smith did succeed in defusing the armed struggle. And now that it was uh, intensified at the beginning of this year, uh, he would like to defuse it once more without settling the basic problem uh, that faces uh, Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is an African country, and naturally it has got to be ruled by the African people who happen to be in the majority. Do you feel the fighting will go on? Yes, it will go on, and it should go on. For instance, you take um, the present arrangement, uh, the defense is to be in the hands of uh, the whites, uh, law and order is to be in the hands of the whites. What happens uh, to our fighters? Thousands and thousands of them outside Zimbabwe. We are very, very anxious indeed about their future. Uh, according to these proposals, there doesn't seem to be uh, any uh, taking into account what will happen to these thousands and thousands of gorillas who have committed themselves uh, to the uh, noble uh, idea of liberating their country. It's, it would appear to me uh, they are just left out and anything can happen to them and nobody seems to be interested in their fate. And yet they are the very people who have caused Mr. Smith to change uh, his attitude toward the entire question of Zimbabwe. So what do you see as the future then of Zimbabwe? A fight to the end until the guerrillas take power? I'm afraid under, under the present circumstances, that has to be uh, the course of events. That was a video presentation launching the Dabaning Sitole Foundation and showcasing the work of one of Zimbabwe's iconic liberation heroes on what would have been his 100th birthday today. And uh, before I continue and um, go into the panel discussion, I wanted to just apologize for the poor sound quality in some parts. My name is Violet Gonda, and I'll be the host for this last part of uh, this uh, event. The chat section in Zoom is open. You're all welcome to post your contributions. And uh, as usual, if you'd like to say something directly, please raise your hands and we will call you up. Let me start with the chairperson of the NSF, retired Anglican Bishop Chad Gandia. Bishop, what space does the NSF seek to occupy in Zimbabwe now? Bishop Gandia? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Let me let me go back. Um, I was saying that um, there is need in Zimbabwe for open discourse about our liberation struggle. The foundation, as we have already mentioned, seeks to promote this open discourse amongst the Zimbabweans with regards to our liberation struggle, so that the story, the history of our struggle is open to everybody. And it should be um, documented uh, truthfully uh, so that the good and the bad is brought out. There is also need for national reconciliation and healing in Zimbabwe. And the foundation seeks to promote and encourage national reconciliation, um, uh, peace with justice amongst all the uh, people of Zimbabwe. And so these are crucial, 
crucial roles that the foundation uh, seeks to occupy and seeks to um, encourage fellow Zimbabweans to participate in. Uh, thank you, Bishop uh, Gandia. Let me go to uh, Simbai Muchimuringa Chizengeni. Simbai, your grandfather passed away almost 20 years ago. Now, can you tell us about the timing of this launch 20 years after his death? Um, yes, I can. Thank, thank you, Violet. I think um, this, our journey towards launching this foundation now uh, started at the time that the uh, Reverend passed away. But over the last few years, it gained momentum particularly as a number of unrelated events happened. The first one being of which we came across a number of academics, notably Professor Heike Schmidt at the University of Reading, as well as Professor Robert Harms at Yale University, who both use Reverend's books for their liberation studies curriculum. Through our interactions, particularly with Heike, um, it became more and more apparent to us that it's very important that we actually um, put some structure to a lot of the work that Reverend did. During this time too, we came across a treasure trove of information in his library, which really was relatively untouched over the last 20, over the last 16 years up until the time we came across the, the information. And going through that information, it was then became very uh, it became apparent that you know it was important that we share this information with Zimbabweans and for all to know about the reverend's views and to, sorry for people to know about the reverend himself but more importantly to know his views on the various contested and controversial um, issues on Zimbabwe's liberation history and then lastly because of the the space for the deeper discourse on, on the liberation history now exists. And as a family, with all the information that we, we found in the library, we, we, found, we found it befitting for us as the family to bequeath, bequeath to the nation um, his papers so that we can provide a foundation upon which that discourse, that much, that much needed discourse on our liberation struggle um, can, can occur. Hmm. Now, Simbai, it was still, still on you. Do, do you think your grandfather would be proud of where the country is right now? No, not at all. Um, from the, from his writing, this is not what this, this is not the Zimbabwe he envisioned. There's a lot. It'll it'll all come out with the with the with the with the um, books that we're republishing. But you know, he was a person of unity, a person. Who, who, who respected people, respected human rights, uh, was a person who upheld cultural and traditional values, and who, who and more importantly, a person who, who, more importantly to me, a person who said, you know, Africa should develop its own systems. Don't look to the East, don't look to the West, let Africa decide for itself what it should what what how it should how it should govern itself and how it what systems it has for itself so to answer your question no he would not not at all hmm. and um l l let me ask um your aunt i believe uh um you mean, uh, you mean uh, I Sifiso, like... aunt Sifiso. sorry Sifiso. i think it's Sifiso. yes 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 yeah oh. is is she online Yes, she is. Sifiso? So I wanted to find out from her, like, uh, uh, to, to, to get her views in terms of, you know, considering the history of Ndabanin Sitole, if he was to wake up today, you know, can he identify with today's Zimbabwe? Um, I don't know if Sifiso can answer that. If not, um, Simbai, I would like to hear your views on that. Because I can't seem to see Sifiso. She on. Okay, Simbai, maybe you can come in. Can you come in and give us your views on this? <laughs> Simbai, are you there? 
you, you're muted. Can you unmute okay. your mic? Okay, yeah. yes, no, no, okay, sorry. So I, to answer that, I'll def my, I will have my mother here who can answer that. Sipikelelo okay. story, she can answer that, yeah. Okay, all right. Sipikelelo, can you come in? Can you give us your thoughts on, on this issue, considering the, the, your father's history? If he was to wake up today, um, do you think he would be able to identify with today's Zimbabwe? We need to unmute Sipikelelo's mic. It's muted. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi there. Simbai, can you unmute the mic? Yeah, thank you. No, even before she, he went to sleep, he already couldn't identify what was going on in Zimbabwe, with Zimbabwe. And there are, even in his, his last days, he wrote what he thought about the system in Zimbabwe. And um, he wouldn't identify with it at all. Why, what, 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 what do you see that has gone terribly wrong? Okay, my father used to talk about, each time we were traveling, he used to look at women carrying uh, big drums of water and say, when I, when I was growing up and say, Pige, when we get our independence, this will never happen. Each woman will have a pipe in their homes They'll have lights, they will have, oh, they'll be able to eat and spend more time just doing whatever they want to do, but not doing the, um, the everyday life, the basics of carrying water, cooking and going to the field without resources. And that our government was going to make, it, make sure that everybody in countryside, in the rural areas, has the basics like anyone in any other country. Right. Developing the country was his thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, thank you very much, Amai Sitole. Let me um, go to Makaita No Mutasa, Mr. Mutasa. Are you online? So I wanted to, 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 to find out from you, um, you know, what are the specific activities that the foundation is planning to execute in the next three years between now and the next uh, three years? Thank you, Violet. I think as I highlighted when we were going through the objectives of the foundation, we spoke mostly about the creation of the Ndabani Dole African Research Center as a documentary center. We also spoke quite a lot about the establishment of the scholarship with University of Reading. But more importantly, our ambition in the next year, short term, mid term and long term is to create the visibility of a platform of discourse, the visibility of the foundation as a source of renewed hope in terms of a developmental, a reconciliatory and a social enhancement platform. We will be calling on historians, we will be calling on researchers, we will be sending out calls for papers, specific research papers that we will be calling out for. To give you an example, we will be calling out for research papers on the Mboroma issue. We will be calling out for research papers around the Mugagawa Declaration. We will be calling out for events to be coordinated so that we can establish the facts and establish the true position for the present and the future generations. We will also be unearthing the names that have been forgotten by history. The first commanders, for example, of the Zandla force, the people who first commanded the wars. We simply want to get the facts out into the public domain. As a foundation, we do not seek to say we are authoritative on any particular topic. 
we are seeking to say we want to work jointly with those whose memories are still live and able to assist and with those researchers and historians who can piece together the past. We mm -hmm. also obviously want to look at the present Zimbabwe and have think tank discussions and also have interactive and discursive forums that can actually try and help us find a practical way out of the dogma that our country so finds itself. So we will issue out a whole diary of events now that we have launched the foundation. We will be issuing a diary of events quarterly, half yearly, annually, right? Those events that help us piece together the history and those events that help us create a new narrative and a new trajectory for our state and nation going forward. And in your, in, in, your, in your video, um, in the video presentation, uh, Mr. Mutasa, you said there is insufficient public uh, discourse on Chimurenga 1. So what lessons can we learn from history about, for example, um, factional splits which continue to dog our politics to, uh, to this day? Thank you very much, Violet, and that's very critical. That's that you have got the nail on the head, right? Essentially, the present position that we have creates the impression that the struggle for our liberation starts in 76, 77, 78, 79, and, and we get independence in 1980. But no, the liberation of our country starts with Imran the one. It starts years and years, decades before that, and it's all interlinked. One gives birth to the other, and the other gives birth to the other. And also in terms of the individual participation, one starts from here and the other starts there. What the nation has generally been made to believe is that the splits that happened during the liberation struggle were splits that occurred because one side or other was willing to make peace with, with the devil, was willing to compromise with the colonial regime. But that's not necessarily the truth, and that's what the foundation seeks to establish. But these splits were more us on us splits. They were black on black. They were intra. They were struggles within ourselves. They were not necessarily a compromise with the colonial regime. But they've been portrayed as if they were compromises with, with the regime. And that's what we are seeking to establish. They were, and they will be, splits yes but we need to be factual about them we need to be realistic about them we need to be telling the truth about them and we need to let the public court of judgment determine whether this split was caused by the right circumstances or not and whether it was a difference in strategy for the same goal or was it actually right a deficiency of one and the other thank you Violet. And I'm sure we'll hear more about uh, uh, these actual events as time goes on. Um, but I, I want to go to Dr. Uh, Ibo Mandaza. Um, Dr. Mandaza, we, we, we all know, I hope Dr. Mandaza is online. Yes, hello. Okay. Hello, Father uh, Joey. Good, good. Now, Damanisi. Very today. familiar. <laughs> 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 Davani Sutole was one of the founding fathers of Zimbabwe, as we all know. Um, but some say he has not been celebrated in, in his own country because he betrayed the struggle. Your thoughts on this? Yes, I, I, in fact, I was looking for my, the obituary, obituary I wrote uh, in 2000 when he died. And I said, uh, among, among many other things, that I'd hope that one day, uh, we do rebury him in the right place. I'm not sure whether the Hero's Acre is the right place anymore. But certainly he is one of the founding fathers of modern Zimbabwe. And, and, and history, the history of Zimbabwe, will acquit him in that respect. Uh, I heard um, Mr. Mtasa speaking about the various uh, splits and counter splits in the history of the national sports in Zimbabwe. That's quite normal. It does not detract at all to the history of this great man. Um, 
his book, African Nationalism, was one of the foundation uh, texts uh, based largely on philosophical uh, understanding of nationalism, extracted largely from the history of Pan-Africanism, Du Bois and others, but contextualized to the African situation, the Zimbabwean situation in particular. So the, he, he should not be wrong about that. Say that people did their part simply to bring independence and crudely uh, to replace whites uh, as rulers of the country. I think African nationalism, uh, I think the Nabinik Stolis, the Joshua Nkomos, uh, Robert Mugabe's, were preempted historically to take us beyond independence. And I think the history of post independence Zimbabwe and post independence Africa as a whole shows that the African nationalists, the main battle was really to achieve equality with whites. It's, that word equality runs through the African nationalist ideology all the time, to the point of, uh, uh, what can I say, uh, reckless abandon. Uh, I mean, uh, the American story is asked by a white journalist whether he has any regret about spending 10 years in prison. He says, no, I feel very happy having spent 10 years. They, 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 they were prepared to sacrifice everything just to achieve independence. And I always tell the story uh, at the Faro Stadium, 1980, uh, Independence Night, uh, when the flag went up, the Zimbabwe flag. I was sitting next to my Sekuru, George Nyandoro, of Namning Nabaningi's uh, generation. He broke down. For him, that was the achievement. I think for most Zimbabweans, for most Africans, uh, even of my generation, it's clear that independence, flag independence, has not been enough. And yet, nothing could be more without that day of independence. And I think Nabanegi's story has to be honored, like all other nationalists. And, and I regret very much that we have, he has been more or less sidelined, but I think that the foundation this evening is the first step in rectifying history, if I may put it, in making this man, placing him right at the center of the history of modern Zimbabwe. Thank you. Okay, no, uh, th thank you, uh, Dr. Ibo Mandaza. Let me take some uh, contributions from uh, viewers. We'll ask Neo Mukono. Can we unmute Neo Mukono so she can ask a question? While we're doing that, I'll just take some comments from the chat. Um, and I think this one was addressed to Reverend um, Mutata. And it's from, I'm just scrolling, just bear with me. Is Neo Mukono, can we unmute Neo Mukono, please? Okay, so so while 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 we 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 are waiting to to hear from Neil Mukono, let me just ask uh, um, Reverend uh, Kenneth Mutata, and this was from Wenesai Walking Walkington Sitole, who asked, "What is the difference between the role of the clergy of the old and the present day Zimbabwe?" Reverend Mutata. Uh, thank you very much um, uh, for for having me. Actually, this is quite an honor. Uh, to sit uh, before the feet of the the great clergy uh, who who shaped the way uh, the could 
could uh, have become. And uh, I think uh, they leave um, uh, work uh, that has not uh, yet been completed. Um, uh, first, I think what uh, Bishop uh, uh, Chad Gandia highlighted, uh, I think um, the, the imagination of a, a united uh, in the midst of its diversity is something that we have not yet managed to, to fully appreciate our nation. Uh, we are still trying to build a homogeneous uh, society. Uh, and I think this, uh, this nuance of understanding nationalism uh, that, is, that recognizes uh, diversity is something that uh, is a gift from uh, the old generation, uh, which uh, was involved in public uh, space. Uh, the second issue, I think, uh, was uh, their ability to normalize uh, Christian participation in, uh, uh, in public life. Because uh, right now we have a, a generation uh, of, uh, of clergy who believe that they are preparing people to go to heaven, uh, who do not care very much about how we organize public life now so that this life is just and uh, is uh, inclusive. So I think that this uh, normalizing of religion in the public space uh, is something that I think is a huge uh, contribution and uh, a work that uh, we still need to, uh, to take forward. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, the, the courage uh, to then uh, at some point to say uh, when uh, uh, the word alone is not sufficient, uh, we will take action and get involved uh, ourselves. I think it's something uh, that uh, we also learn from this uh, generation. Thank you very much. Uh, and, and Reverend Mutata, can you speak also on the issue of uh, tribal politics? We, we, we heard from uh, a speech um, that was delivered on behalf of um, former Kenyan Prime Minister Raila Odinga. And we, we, we know that tribal politics proved to be the major uh, force against Raila Odinga's ascendancy um, to the presidency of Kenya. What are your views on tribal politics in Zimbabwe, particularly in the case of Reverend Dabaling Sitoli? Um, I, I think Dr. Ibo Mandaza could have spoken on that uh, far much better. He's the one person I had him quite being, uh, being quite articulate on, uh, on the invention of uh, ethnic politics in Zimbabwe. Uh, and uh, I, I learned uh, that uh, actually this invention of, uh, of ethnicity in Zimbabwe is not uh, a very old. Actually, maybe it's something that we invented in the 1930s, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and uh, I think uh, we, we are still uh, not yet ab uh, able, we, we are not able to realize that uh, the, the ethnic differences that are exaggerated today uh, were managed in a completely different way earlier in the earlier generation. Um, so we, the people who, who, who exploited ethnicity did not do so in the best interest of the country, but in the interest uh, of uh, positioning themselves. And, and I think uh, this is a case that still suffering from as a nation uh, because the even right now, when people give reference to ethnicity, they are not doing it with an idea of equalization or of creating equal opportunities for all citizens, but they are doing so so that they can divide the nation uh, for personal uh, uh, and for, for expedience. And, and I think that's why the older generation uh, of uh, Reverend Dabaning Stole uh, and others were able uh, above uh, the, uh, those uh, those differences, but uh, at some point they suffer uh, the uh, uh, um, those who started to see that actually there could be an advantage uh, of uh, of um, of ethnizing uh, uh, politics. But I think it's possible that we can be healed from this uh, if we go back uh, to retrieve uh, the positive history of the of the nation. Uh, thank you, Reverend Mutata. Uh, Dr. Ibo Mandaza, anything to add on the issue of tribal politics in Zimbabwe? You have unmute me? Yeah, yeah, no, I just uh, thanks uh, uh, Kenneth Mutata for, for using me as a reference. <laughs> I have to use others as a reference as well. 
I think the a famous South African called Achi Mafeje was my teacher, wrote a, 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 a little article uh, in the Journal of African Studies in 1970, 1969 called The Ideology of Tribalism. And he made just three points. The first was that tribalism is an invention of the colonialists. Because he said in the ordinary sense, a tribe is a socio sociological unit, pre-colonial, describes a family, a family or families in a particular location, completely uh, isolated from the modern world. And he's saying basically they all impact, the impact of colonialism by definition, destroyed the whole social and historical basis of tribe. And therefore tribe, tribal, tribe and tribalism was an invention of the colonialist as part of divide and rule, or as part of trying to perpetuate a pre-colonial setting in the interest of a colonial situation. And so, uh, secondly, therefore, he says that uh, nationalism, African nationalism, was really, uh, ironically, a coalition of tribes, inverted commas. Uh, nationalists sought to create an alliance between the various definitions of tribes that colonials have, had, had established. And if you look at the history of uh, Namuniki Stoll himself, or, or Joshua and Como, they come to the fore as leaders, partly as a compromise between perceived different ethnic or tribal identities. So Joshua and Como is brought by by George Nandoro and Chikerema uh, as a kind of a compromise between the rivalries already present in national politics between the so-called Zezuru's and so-called Karangas. And therefore, the Ndebele factor becomes a compromise. And so likewise, 1963, ZANU is formed, Stole becomes a compromise. If you remember, Nabaneng Stole beat uh, Robert Mugabe to the presidency <laughs> of ZANU in 1963 at Guero. So the, the, the principle of compromise has been quite constant in Zimbabwean nationalist politics. It's a way of balancing compromising. I remember very clearly at the independence my man, our mandate as, uh, as new uh, permanent secretaries, leaders, so to speak, was to use the compass in all appointments, north, south, east, west, east, central. Every board, every ministry, you have to balance out. And this is, this is the, what I call the, the expertise of old nationalists. The number of stories, the Joshua and Comos, the, 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 the Robert Mugabe's, they were not immune to tribalism, but they knew how to manage it, how to mediate it, to create nationhood. And the best experiment, the best uh, experiences in this regard are, of course, Julius, Julius Nyerere and, 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 uh, uh, Kenneth Kaunda. But let's be fair, people like Dominic Stole and Mugabe achieved that to a level. By contrast, I think the what's the Mnangagwa, he's far from being a nationalist. He has no clue at all as to how to balance, to create a national balance of the kind that Mugabe is and Kaunda's and there. So nationalism has a certain brand to it. It's a, an acute understanding of what the national nationhood uh, means, how to balance, how to create, how to create the foundation of a nation. 
And I think if one, if uh, Namunegu Stoli was alive, you would lament the extent to which the current leadership in Zimbabwe have lost it in that regard. And, and, and I think I'll stop there. Okay, no, thank you, Dr. Ibo Mandaza. Let me read a few uh, comments from um, the chat from uh, Ibi Auma in Kenya. Um, an insightful and comprehensive introduction of the Dabaning Sitwele Foundation. Um, former Prime Minister Raila Odinga is so proud to be associated with this noble cause. Ibrahim Omar, personal assistance to the Right Honorable Raila Amolo Odinga. Thank you for that comment. Uh, from Cassius, Sekurundaba would have been proud to see this. Well done to all those who have contributed uh, to this initiative. So I will take maybe one more um, uh, uh, call from the floor. If anyone has got something that they want to raise, please raise your, your hand and then I'll call you. Um, but uh, let me go to, in the meantime, to go to uh, Bishop Gandia to see if he can um, give us his thoughts on the way forward because we've heard so much about what needs to be done. Um, and, um, you know, uh, uh, Raila Odinga said, a people united can never be defeated. How can we build a strong foundation of peace and reconciliation and justice in Zimbabwe? Uh, Bishop Gandia, your, your views on this? Right. Um, we definitely need to um, drop in everybody. Um, we have we have politicians and uh, church people, uh, civic society. We need to work together for the good of our nation. And as a way forward, I think we we have started as Dabaningi Stole Foundation say, look, liberation struggle was won by us all, and not just by a few individuals. That could be a starting point for us, that we acknowledge the contributions of um, uh, all people, regardless of where they are coming from. There may have been differences but that should not in any way minimize the huge contributions. And so um, I would like to invite um, you all to join us in um, correcting mistakes of the past and charting the way forward. As a, as, as a nation. Thank you, Bishop Gandia. And uh, we have a raised hand, Francis Musoni. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Violet. I just wanted to uh, congratulate the uh, Stolle family for um, what they've done in, uh, uh, for a you know, great job in establishing the Lebanese uh, Stolle Foundation. I am one of those uh, people uh, currently who have uh, already expressed uh, much interest in the late reference to less work. Um, uh, as uh, uh, the family knows, I'm currently working on a biography of uh, the late reference the Manik Stole. And I must say that I feel very, very encouraged by, you know, uh, this uh, event and the achievements that uh, uh, come with this, especially when I hear that the uh, foundation has plans to uh, to launch uh, the or already the foundation is working on the Andabaningi Stole Research Center. Uh, that is something that I would really want to uh, uh, I would I would urge everybody to support that because I know for for sure from my personal uh, research that I've done with the the large part of it with the assistance of the family, there is a lot of uh, material out there 
uh, that uh, relates to the life and work of uh, the late Reverend Amanigi Stoller. I will quickly mention uh, Yale University Divinity Library. Um, uh, there is a lot of material that came from uh, um, uh, from the semin from the seminar where the late Reverend went uh, for his BA in Divinity uh, you know, Studies. You know the the seminar is, uh, I think it's um, end of a new turn. Uh, it closed. Uh, in other words, uh, there was a time when it ran into I mean it ran into some financial issues and it got merged into the Yale University Divinity School. And so they brought uh, with them a lot of material, including some very personal, original uh, documents that the, Lef the Reverend wrote when he was uh, in prison. Uh, and they are there at, uh, at, at your university. So my hope as a, as a scholar, as a historian, and as someone who is also working on uh, the late Reverend's um, you know, biography is that that material will be um, uh, the foundation will find a way to bring that material home to Zimbabwe, at least uh, at, at least uh, the original or copies of such uh, of, th of those materials, so that uh, many of us, uh, including the young Zimbabweans born after independence, who have been made to understand uh, the history of this uh, luminary that we are celebrating today, from a specific, a specifically narrow perspective will get uh, an opportunity to, to learn more about him and also to appreciate the work that he did uh, towards the liberation uh, of Zimbabwe. I've listened very closely to uh, the debates, the discussions for today, and I personally feel uh, very, very uh, encouraged. And I hope that, uh, uh, you know, of course, he, he, like anyone else, had his uh, points of weaknesses and uh, you know, controversies. But there's a whole lot of uh, uh, material. I mean, there's a lot that we can learn as, as a nation from uh, uh, if we take the time to understand who, who he was and what he did, uh, I think there's a lot that we can, we can learn. And I hope that the, the, the scholarship program and the research center uh, project will, will succeed and will contribute to educating, especially our the young generation about the life and work of the late Reverend. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Francis Musoni. And before I go to um, Mr. Mutasa for his uh, closing remarks, I understand uh, Dr. Ibo Mandaza would like to make a short comment. Dr. Mandaza. Uh, thank you, Violet. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. No, I just want, I, I don't want to forget, uh, in the course of my work uh, uh, with South Africa, Minister of International Relations, I came across uh, uh, Lady Paulina Mokazi. Mokazi, she's on this program, listening in for South Africa. Her grandfather was a Sitole, and she came to Zimbabwe a few months, a few years ago, to trace her roots. Went as far as Chipinge, and she's definitely part of the Sitole family. So I'd like to just welcome Paulina Mokazi. Uh, to the program and say that here you are, you had it all about your 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 great great uncle. Secondly, I want just to say the following with respect to the last speaker. Um, in nineteen in the early nineties, uh, we gave uh, the Reverend Namling uh, Stoli a grant at Sapis Trust to do his autobiography. Um, and he, within a month or two or less, he had done five chapters of the autobiography. And then something went wrong. The Churu farm issue and, and it stopped. But these were amazing uh, five chapters. I learned a lot of, about it. And I'm just wondering, those who made reference to his uh, collection in the various libraries, in the various seminaries, whether they came across these five chapters. Uh, he, I, I, unfortunately, those were the days of uh, hard copy. <laughs> there was no, no saving on discs and so on and so forth. I gave the five chapters to Masipula's story. Uh, 
his brother, uh, to finish the autobiography. I'm sorry to say, but Masipula was nowhere near his older brother in terms of writing skills. And what was produced was not acceptable for publication. And I thought that Vesta story might have had got that uh, copy of the five chapters because in her book in which she, she accuses me of refusing to write his autobiography which is completely was completely false and I, I, I rebutted that uh, on the contrary I invested so much in the old man in terms of trying to get that autobiography out of him and I'm just hoping that in the course of your research uh, fellow researchers out there you can come across this five fantastic chapters about the Lamberg story. And I didn't know then, then that she was born in Amadlovo until the, those five chapters, that his mother was a Chuma, that his first language was actually uh, in Debele, that his first book was actually in Debele. Um, and it gives a major insight into the whole history of um, the the Ndao factor in Zimbabwean history. I really hope we can find it and maybe we should uh, uh, exchange notes, but we should try and find those five chapters if okay. it's possible. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ibu Mandaza. And on the issue of research materials, quite a few people are uh, agreeing with what uh, Francis Musoni said. Um, Joy Mutare Fashu Kanu says, oh yes, I agree, the West possess so much of our heritage and are reluctant to give it back and are reluctant to give it back, arguing sometimes that they can take better care of it. And we have Alitha Muzorewa who says, I understand a great amount of the materials he produced will cost money to retrieve. Is it possible to ask the entities that hold them to donate them to the foundation? I am confident some will be willing to do that a goodwill gesture if asked. And um, the strengths ask, how do we become members of the foundation who have their plans to help us donate towards the cause the small way we can also media presence is needed. Perhaps uh, um, the executive manager of the foundation, Makaite No Mutasa, can answer those last questions, especially in terms of how can um, others be members of the foundation. And on that note, for me, Violet Gonda, I'll say this marks the official end of the launch of the NSF. I will now hand over to Mr. Mutasa with his closing remarks. Thank you everyone for participating in this event. Mr. Mutasa. Thank you very much, Violet. Thank you very much to everybody who has been with us this evening. I, as I said in my opening remarks, I am overjoyed and I am happy that it is a joy that seems to fill a lot more of us than I had anticipated and imagined. I would like to encourage all of those that would like to follow our work, to support our work and to be with us and to share with us to visit our website on www.stole.org and to follow us on the various social media handles such as Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram using at Ndaba Foundation. There you will find direction to how you can support us, to how you can work with us, and to how you can be, you can be with us. I am humbled by this evening. I'm humbled by the contributions from everybody. A wise man once said, the best time to have planted a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. And therefore, if we did not plant this tree 20 years ago, we are planting it at the next best possible time. I thank you all and goodbye.